In this video, we will dig into the history on how the rulers brainwashed the people they ruled to keep them under control. We're going to talk about Christianity, witch hunt that took place in the medieval Europe, Constantine the Great, King James I, and much more. By looking through each history, you will understand that the same thing is going on in our modern society, and it's crucial for us to be aware on how to prevent being brainwashed. This video is the ultimate summary from a Japanese best-selling author, Dr. Tomobechi, who's a neuroscientist and definitely one of the smartest guys on this earth. Who is the founder of the Christian religion? Your answer might be Jesus, but Jesus actually lived his life as a follower of the Jewish faith. Paul the Apostle, commonly known as Saint Paul, actually extracted the essence of what Jesus preached, such as salvation and that salvation can only be granted by Christian faith. Saint Paul built up Christianity to a world religion and it's said that his diligence and ascetic personality added flavor to what Jesus originally preached. But Christianity was intentionally changed after Saint Paul died. The Roman Emperor Constantine the Great recreated the content of what Jesus and Paul structured. In other words, you could say that the founder of Christianity wasn't Jesus nor Paul, but actually Constantine. Constantine had the ambition to reunify the Roman Empire, which was at that time divided into East and West. And in order to do so, he laid eyes on Christianity. In the year 313 AD, Constantine proclaimed the religious toleration of Christianity within the Roman Empire. And this laid the foundation to establish Christianity as the national religion for Rome. In that time, there were several interpretations regarding the Christian doctrine and the Trinity. Trinity is what defines God, the Father, Jesus, the Son of God, and the Holy Ghost as three equally divine persons. This was supported by Athanasius and the group he led. Arianism was against the Trinity theory and insisted that God and Jesus and the Holy Ghost are three different things and that Jesus was created by God with divine attributes but not internally divine. At the first council of Nicaea in 325 AD, which was the first supreme council of Roman Catholic Church that Constantine took the lead and organized, and the council decided in favor of Athanasius to be legit and deemed Arianism to be heresy. Constantine was always in the game and after banishing Arianism, he started working on compelling the Bible. 27 books of the New Testament was chosen by Athanasius, but Constantine had a huge amount of influence in this procedure. Constantine didn't accept anything that would be inconvenient for him to rule his empire. The Dead Sea Scrolls that were discovered near the Dead Sea in the 20th century adds up to over 850 manuscripts. The estimated burned books might be 10 times or 100 times more. From all these documents, 27 books were carefully selected and combined into the New Testament. This becomes the Biblical canon in the year 397 AD, and the Roman Catholic Church has never changed a single word since then. It's interesting to know that Constantine took initiative of selecting these 27 books, and he adopted the Epistles of Paul, which had ascetic elements inside and was convenient for governing, which means any Gospels that might be inconvenient were rejected. Jesus spoke Aramaic or Hebrew, but Paul has never met Jesus when he was alive. The epistles of Paul is written in Greek. The word virgin in English comes from Alma in Hebrew, which means maiden or woman of childbearing age. In the process of translating the word into Greek, it changed to Pathanus, which means both maiden and virgin. But in the year 325 AD, when Jesus' virgin birth became doctrine at the Council of Nicaea, the original meaning of Alma turned to just virgin regardless of what it originally meant. Why? You could say that there might have been a special reason that Jesus had to be born from a virgin. Jesus had to be sinless and divine. In any era, religion always builds up a dogma that is quite useful for the rulers. In other words, any religion wouldn't have expanded without being supportive to the rulers. Religion is always a useful tool to govern people and also easy for the rulers to bring down the political opponents because they just have to say, these guys are betraying God. Next, about King James I. Normally, there is only one English Bible and that is the King James Version, KGV. This is the Bible for Protestantism, which was translated under the order of James I, the King of England and Ireland. It was during the era of Protestant Reformation when politics were starting to change drastically. King James might have thought that in order to maximize his power, a new English Bible was necessary. 
he instructed some words to be changed for the Holy Bible to be convenient for ruling. For example, the word church was originally using congregation, but James changed it to church so that it stands for the Church of England. The phrase thou shall do not kill in the Greek and Latin written Catholic Bible was changed to thou shall do not murder. This could mean that God prohibited murder but didn't prohibit killing. If killing was prohibited, there would be no war and the rulers wouldn't like that. The Puritans that moved to America in the 17th century from the Church of England used the KGV. I know this might sound a little bit twisted. But it could also mean that killing Indians were somehow okay, but not murdering. Next, do you know the best-selling book in the medieval Europe? Normally you would say the Bible, but this might not really be the case. Some statistics say it's the Hammer of Witches. This book took a big role in making witch hunt become extremely popular in that era. When you imagine a witch, you might think of a stereotype old witch on a broom. But in the Hammer of Witches, it's illustrated more like a sexy woman who seduces men. In an era without porno being published, you can imagine it was easy for the readers to get a rose. And this was one of the reasons why this kind of witch trial manual could become a best-selling book. The storyline of a sexy woman having sexual affair with a demon formed a violent and romantic illusion on the ground to support the witch trials in the real world. Now, everything has two sides of the same coin. One side is what's happening on the surface. In this case, it's the printed Bible. But when something goes extremely viral in a wide range and for a long period, both sides are definitely needed. And the underground force in this case was the hammer of witches. On the surface, people were talking and debating about Protestant Reformation and what is written in the Bible. But underground, there was no discussion or criticizing on whether there is really such a thing of a witch and whether the witch trial is right or wrong. The invention of Gutenberg's printing press played a big role in human history to develop modern knowledge. But on the other hand, it also made people believe in wrong stereotype ideas by being repeatedly printed. The rulers and the religious leaders knew how effective the printed words can influence people which was why witch hunt became more violent. There was also a social background for the people to accept witch hunting. In the 14th century, there was a devastating pandemic which killed 30 to 60 percent of Europe's total population. It was also the start of the Little Ice Age when Earth cooled down and continuous droughts and famine occurred. People had strong anxiety and fear of living their lives, and the witches were a scapegoat for their anger. Demonology was written by James I in 1597, roughly 100 years after Hammer of Witches was written. The content was similar and also influenced many witch trials in England. Let's dig more into depth about King James I. James grew up in an extraordinarily complicated family. His mother, Mary Stuart, Queen of Scotland, gave birth to him when she was having love affairs with David Rizzio, an Italian private secretary. Everyone knew that James' father was the Italian secretary and not King Henry. King Henry ordered to murder David Rizzio during a dinner party and was stabbed by a knife numerous times. Mary Stuart continued having love affairs with other people in an attempt to assassin King Henry a few times. In 1567, King Henry's residence was destroyed by explosion and he was found murdered. Later on, Mary Stuart herself was beheaded by her cousin Elizabeth I. And when Elizabeth I died in 1603, James became the new king. Quite heavy, right? As you can imagine, James had to fight against any suspicion that his real father might have been an Italian secretary. And maybe he was determined as king to think his destiny is to wipe out all the cursed demons in the world. He might also have believed that witch hunt was the only way for him to expel all the curses from his family. And the reason why he gave orders to translate the Bible in English was to reflect himself as Jesus by emphasizing that Jesus was virgin birth so that it could help erase any rumors that his father was an Italian secretary. James' experience in life, no matter how extraordinary it was, had influence in the translation of the KGV. Asceticism is buried inside many religions. Many religions that have socially succeeded preach their followers to worthy poverty and not to pursue pleasure. This element was very useful for the rulers and that's why the rulers protected religions that have asceticism elements inside. 
Christianity had the essence of asceticism from Paul's ascetic personality which was reflected in the Bible. And the person who laid eyes on this was Constantine the Great. And along with the prosperity of the Roman Empire, the Christian asceticism expanded. In the medieval Europe, the concept of witch was created. A witch was the image of a seductive woman that would turn people to heresy. And because the rulers prohibited any witch actions by witch hunting, the asceticism was strengthened. The people that were charged as witches were sent to witch trial and would have to admit either they are a witch and be burned to death or be punished until they are dead. The property were forfeited too and they would have to name another person who they knew as witch. And this goes on and on. Those who weren't charged as witch would feel great relief and would pay their taxes with pleasure. The strange thing is that people who are extremely plundered would start feeling more gratitude towards their ruler when the plunder is reduced. The rulers in the medieval Europe possessed enough power for people to obey. But you might think, why are the rulers so evil and greedy for money? And why they strike on innocent people and take away everything? Well, it's because they know they can achieve it if they do it from experience. Now, knowing and actually doing is absolutely different. It's completely different. For example, when a person knows in his head that if he takes the action he will get it, it's still difficult for him to take actions because he might be worrying what if I can't or what if something goes wrong. But for a person who already took the action in the past and got the results, there is no hesitation in doing so again. That's the reality built inside the rulers. They know that they can take what they want. A king and an ordinary person have completely different mindsets. From a king perspective, people are slaves. The king will never understand what a slave thinks. But from an ordinary person point of view, they think, how shame on the king, he must be insane to be so cruel. It's called the information asymmetry. There is always an unbalanced amount of information between both sides. There are two basic principles in brainwashing. 1. The information is decided behind closed doors. 2. Authority is added to the content. Let me explain. As we went through in this video, Constantine had deep influence in designing the content of the New Testimony behind closed doors. And obviously, the New Testimony had authority by Constantine the Great himself. The Hammer of the Witches was written by Heinrich Kramer and James Springer, but was backed up by the Roman Pope and the administration supported all their inquisition activities. A book that contains such a political role couldn't possibly be published personally. In this sense, it must have been decided behind closed doors. The Hammer of the Witches was recommended by the Professor of Cologne and also by the Roman Popes, so it had authority as well. When any information is made behind closed doors and added with authority, people will get easily brainwashed and have delusions that such information is 100% true. It's difficult to even question the thoughts inside, just like children believing the values of their parents. The information won't be verified whether it's right or wrong and turns out to be true without any doubt. And this kept on making people believe asceticism is novel and especially during and after the witch hunt it had huge impact to change the sexual life and social trends. And the spirit of asceticism was combined to Protestant and later to the Puritans which contributed to the development of capitalism. This still has major influence in the Christian fundamentalism in America today. Just like when Gutenberg's print press was invented, we live in a revolutionary world of internet and social media. Internet made us possible to access to any information and share it immediately around the globe. But just like we looked through in this video, there is always two sides of the same coin. There are always possibilities of manipulated information being spread by the intention of the rulers. This can be done so cleverly so that even the experts can recognize and people won't be able to verify whether it's really true or not. What's an example of witch hunt in our modern society today? It's wiping out whomever is annoying for the rulers. Social media is a kind of underground media and people that are in that group have access to the information. Just like during the witch hunt, people don't tend to verify the source of information and they just believe it. The words that are repeated inside the group aren't criticized or checked. For example, any false info can be easily spread via Twitter. Twitter is the platform that people could tweet anything in 140 letters on what they feel emotionally. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong and doesn't accept any counter arguments. 
by attacking a single person with negative campaigns. In Twitter, you can literally kill someone. By repeating the same message over and over again, eventually, it can sneak into each person's subconscious and the rulers can control them in whatever way they want. In the medieval Europe, the rulers controlled the people with fear. Pests, unseasonable weather, war, witch hunt. Amplifying fear is always the ruler's specialty in any era. The chain reaction of fear makes people obey to power blindly and make them shrink themselves living in a limited free world. This is the same in our modern society too. Terrorism, global warming, food crisis, financial crisis, unemployment, energy crisis and so on. The world is full of fear and there is always seeds of the next witch hunt. How can we avoid being witch hunted? Well, it's to keep money out of your head whenever accessing to an information. When you have the desire to want more money, the rulers can easily trap you because they know that money, social status, and sex are the three big traps useful in any era. Building up the ability to think and to decide by yourself is crucial to prevent being brainwashed. The most unfavorable thing for the rulers is for the people to have freedom. It means for the people to be free-minded and free-handed and not being hung up with stereotypes views of the world. When people start being awake, they don't need to hang on their current lives. They realize that there's something out there more valuable deep down inside their heart. When this happens, the rulers, regime, and authorities will fall down immediately. Are you strong enough to avoid being brainwashed? Thank you for watching. In this channel, I summarize Japanese business and self-development books into English. I believe there are absolutely great books in Japan that are unknown and my passion is to introduce the great wisdom to the world. If you're interested, please don't forget to smash that subscribe button and notification bell so that you don't miss the new videos coming up. Also, if you like this button, please hit the like button and check out the other book summaries that I made for Dr. Tomobechi's books. I believe he's such an amazing author. Question of the day, are you interested in the Knights Templar? That might be my next video, but I'm just curious if anyone is interested. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.